Alrighty guys, it is Quaman here today and I'm bringing you another Dragon Ball Z segment on What if Goku killed Frieza with the Spirit Bomb? And this is a video request from Skirpter. So, in today's video I will analyze how this will change all of the four different timelines of Dragon Ball Z and how it would affect the different types of interactions of all of the characters. So without wasting any more time, let's get straight into the video. Let me quickly mention, however, that you will not understand many of the things that I explained in this video if you haven't seen my alternate timeline theory that I refer to. So let's get started. So let's begin with the aftermath in the original timeline that Cell comes from. When Goku defeats Frieza with the Spirit Bomb, Goku, Piccolo, Gohan, Krillin, and Bulma would all be on Namek afterwards. Since the planet would never be destroyed, the Z Fighters would wait for Mr. Popo to restore all of the Namics. Although Vegeta would be looked at as a bad guy to everyone, Goku would most likely wish for Vegeta to return to life because he would think Vegeta wasn't as evil as he was before and so he could challenge him for the future. With that said, Vegeta wouldn't come to Earth as Dende forced the wish that originally brought Vegeta to Earth and he didn't really have a choice. With the third and final wish, the Z Fighters would probably ask the Namix to wish for Yamcha back to life and would return home in a spaceship. Since it takes 130 days to reuse the Dragon Balls, which is 4 months and 10 days, Goku would communicate with King Kai to speak with the Namix. He would ask for them to bring back Chaozu and Tien Shinhan. With the third remaining wish, it is unclear what the Namix would do with it, but my guess would be that they would have saved it for the future. Now, after they wish back the Z Fighters, we would move on to a major problem. At this point, King Cole would have been aware of Frieza's death, since communication would have been lost with Frieza, the Ginyu Force, and the Henchmen. We are unsure how long it would take King Cole to go to planet Namek, but we would assume that since the planet didn't blow up, he would wait longer than he originally did to search for him. Once King Cole arrives on Namek, he would obviously want to search for the Dragon Balls on planet Namek. He would then interrogate the Namics. Since King Cole looks like Frieza and has an extremely high power level, the Namics would obviously not give in to his commands. King Cole would then want the Dragon Balls to restore Frieza back to life. After the Namix refused, King Cole would get extremely angry and would then destroy the planet without question, eliminating the Namekian race besides Piccolo, Kami, and Nail who are all on Earth. Since Frieza is dead, King Cole's doctors wouldn't have to reconstruct him. Now, it's uncertain how he would find out where Earth is, but my guess would be that he and his henchmen would check all sources of information and my educated guess is that they would stumble onto the conversation that Frieza spied on involving Nappa, Vegeta, and the Z-Warriors, which would identify Goku as an Earthling. Considering the technological advancement of King Cold's men, they would plan a trip to Earth. However, as suggested by Black and Fist, it could be a lot later than Frieza and King Cole arriving since they would have gone to Namek later and would research Earth. Black and Fist also suggested that repairing Frieza wouldn't save significant time in the overall process. We know from the series that King Cole lacks a desire to torture the way Frieza did, so he would probably try to blow up the Earth from outer space. So, you're probably wondering how the Z Fighters would avoid this. Well, let's look at Piccolo. He is arguably the smartest fighter in the series. Sensing King Cole's power from afar and knowing Goku is not strong enough to turn Super Saiyan and defeat King Cole, he would have no choice but to fuse with Kami. Now you're probably wondering why he would fuse with Kami now, but he didn't decide on doing it in the original timeline or in the hot timeline. Well the difference is that King Cole's power would be coming in from afar which would give him time to plan it. In the original series, Piccolo also probably thought that Goku may be able to make it in time, which is why he didn't gamble it. But considering the huge difference in power and Goku not knowing Super Saiyan yet, Piccolo would have no choice. After fusing with Kami, I think the battle would be tough, but with Piccolo fighting alongside Goku, I'm confident that they would be able to beat King Cole if Piccolo fused with Kami. Who knows, maybe Goku may do another spirit bomb while Piccolo held King Cole off if Piccolo wasn't strong enough. 
or maybe Goku and Piccolo decided to blast King Cole with a really strong energy blast from planet Earth to destroy King Cole since King Cole probably would want to destroy Earth from outer space without even fighting him. But overall, I think that Goku and Piccolo would find a way to defeat him. Moving on, regardless of the timing, it is clear that Goku was essentially destined to catch the heart virus as he's caught it in every single timeline. So after he and Piccolo managed to defeat King Cole, he would catch the heart virus and die. Then the androids would show up and kill the rest of the Z Fighters. Piccolo would put up a much better fight than he originally did, but due to the fact that there are two androids who are approximately the same in strength, I believe that my favorite character Piccolo would meet his demise along with the other Z Fighters excluding Gohan. Despite less training however, the death of the Z Fighters and Piccolo should be enough for Gohan to turn into a Super Saiyan but the biggest difference would be the absence of Trunks. Because Trunks isn't alive, Gohan wouldn't be as risky with his life considering there would be no one else strong enough to defend the Earth if he died. With that said, he wouldn't risk his life the same way the original future Gohan did, and over the years he would go back in time using Bulma's time machine similar to Trunks. For those of you who saw my alternate timeline theory, you would know that up to this point in the video, the two timelines that I've talked about include the original timeline that Cell comes from and the unseen timeline is the timeline that future Gohan traveled to for his first attempt to change history. I also made a video strictly talking about what would happen if future Gohan went back in time instead of future Trunks, but that video differs from this video because future Gohan would have had a completely different lifestyle because of the fact that the spirit bomb would have killed Frieza instead. Either way, future Gohan would arrive before King Cole arrived on Earth. He would tell Goku about the virus and his appearance would stop Piccolo from fusing with Kami. He would come back kill King Cole and knowing Gohan he would probably suggest to Goku to wipe out Dr. Jiro before the androids appear. Because we know Goku and his Saiyan pride, he would refuse and he would want to fight them. Gohan would then tell Goku that he needs to train and become a Super Saiyan if he even wants to think about fighting the androids. Gohan would tell him that he needs to get enraged and think about the whole planet being wiped out by the androids. Gohan would then leave to return years later to assist them during the android fight. Since the unseen timeline would probably branch out similar to the main timeline, 19 and 20 should show up. We don't know when Goku would catch the heart virus, but it's implied that he may have intensified the effect when he went to Amiibo City. Since the fight would turn out similar to the main timeline, Goku would be losing to 19, Piccolo is about to intervene and at some point maybe future Gohan would show up, if not earlier. He would kill 19 and would not allow Dr. Jiro to escape. They would then search for the android base, take possible blueprints and wipe them all out before they are released. Future Gohan would then return to his original timeline to kill the androids with the device and peace would return to Earth. Now, if future Gohan decided to go back in time like Trunks did to tell the Z Fighters about him beating the androids, Cell could possibly kill him similar to future Trunks, take his time machine and then go to the hot timeline which would branch out into the main timeline. Now, if you saw my alternate timeline theory video, you would know that there is a plot hole when Cell went to the hot timeline but he needed to go to the hot timeline in order for it to diverge into the main timeline and for those of you who don't know, hot stands for history of trunks. So basically bad shit happens again where Piccolo fuses and he and Goku beat King Cole, the androids come, kill the Z fighters, Gohan escapes and then goes into the main timeline this time. All the events that I mentioned before would happen except for the arrival of Cell after they destroy the androids. This time, however, since the androids would have been destroyed by Gohan and the rest of the Z Fighters before they were released, he would have no androids to absorb. However, Piccolo, knowing how strong Cell is, would fuse with Kami in this timeline, unlike the Unseen timeline. He would then kill Cell and the android threat would now be over. Now, notice I didn't mention what happens to the Unseen timeline. Well, that's because no one really cares about it. In this video, I'm going to focus on the main timeline from this point on. So, after Piccolo kills Cell and Goku heals up, knowing Cell is around, Goku would suggest to Gohan that if the android is from the future, referring to Cell, he can't beat him without getting stronger, 
and that the android may be waiting for him in the future. He would suggest that he and future Gohan go into the hyperbolic time chamber. Now, here is where things get interesting. Considering the fact that future Gohan is stronger than Kid Gohan at the time, Goku would not have to hold back against him in the hyperbolic time chamber for the first couple of months because he would already have been a Super Saiyan and future Gohan would have been a Super Saiyan as well. They would train and future Gohan would eventually come out knowing Super Saiyan 2 and Goku would know Super Saiyan 2 as well considering his rate of training would be greater considering the fact that future Gohan still has the hidden potential of Kid Gohan and he already has a stronger body. Future Gohan would return to his time and wipe out Cell and the androids easily whenever they showed up and peace would be restored to the future. After observing how strong Goku and Future Gohan got, Piccolo would want to go into the hyperbolic time chamber as well and Kid Gohan would observe how strong the future version of himself is which would inspire him to go into the hyperbolic time chamber with Piccolo which would both give them boosts and Kid Gohan would learn Super Saiyan in that period of time in the hyperbolic time chamber. So we can safely say that Piccolo and Kid Gohan would go into the hyperbolic time chamber after Goku and Future Gohan did. Now, as far as the rest of the main timeline goes, keep in mind that at some point Goten would be born and he would know Super Saiyan. Now as I mentioned before with the regular main timeline Gohan learning Super Saiyan, I had to think of a reason because of this. Would it make any sense for Kid Goten to know Super Saiyan but yet his older brother doesn't know Super Saiyan? In that case it wouldn't, really wouldn't make sense how the younger version of Goten would obviously know Super Saiyan and his older brother can't. Which would make me believe that at some point Gohan would want to go into the hyperbolic time chamber so he could at least get to the first stage of Super Saiyan. But I definitely think that Gohan would have never gotten to Super Saiyan 2. Either way, I believe that at some point Chi Chi would agree for Goten to become a fighter and for Gohan to continue studying. Now some of you may disagree with this because Gohan mentioned in the series that mom changed once dad had died. But in this case, I think it would be a little bit different considering the fact that Goku would try to convince Chi Chi that he needs at least one son to take the mantle of leadership for Earth in his absence. With that said, Gohan would eventually go to high school and meet Fidel. Hercule would still be popular as a celebrity, but he wouldn't be anywhere near as popular as he was when he had killed Cell. Gohan would fight crime with Videl, and eventually Videl would become his girlfriend. They would then go to the World Martial Arts Tournament and Spopovich and Yamu would be there. Goten would win the Kid Division without any competition from Trunks. It's unknown if Hercule would participate but I think he would considering the fact that he had already previously won a World Martial Arts Tournament on his own and he wouldn't be aware of how strong the other Z Fighters were. Goku probably would not participate in the tournament and Chi Chi would want Gohan to go to the World Martial Arts Tournament so that he can win them a lot of money. Krillin probably wouldn't go as well considering he was inspired by Android 18 to compete. The Supreme Kai and Kabito would be there as well. Piccolo would go because he would want to test how strong Gohan was over the years even though Gohan wouldn't be anywhere near as strong as he originally was. Because Piccolo was the one who had defeated Cell years ago, Bobbity would be anticipating his power level and Spopovich and Yamu would try to absorb Piccolo's energy instead of Gohan's. They would fly off, Kabito would heal Piccolo and then they would go to find Bobbity. Since Piccolo was much stronger this time and he doesn't hold back whenever he fights against his opponents, he would want to kill Dabora. Dabora may be a little too strong for Piccolo considering the fact that he was around the strength of Cell, but Goku would be able to take on Dabora and all of Babidi's henchmen with no problem. Without Vegeta however, there is no distraction to stop Goku and Piccolo from killing Dabora, Babidi and the rest of his henchmen before Majin Buu is unleashed. Supreme Kai would then take Buu's magical ball to his planet and the series would end right there. Now, two more questions are left to be answered. The first one includes Vegeta. Now, we don't know exactly when Vegeta would come back to fight Goku, but my assumption is that Vegeta would come back to fight Goku once he learns how to go into a Super Saiyan. Considering the fact that he would have never trained in the gravity chamber and Goku wouldn't have already been a Super Saiyan to motivate him to become a Super Saiyan faster, Vegeta's rate of training would be significantly lower, which means that he would probably take many years to become a Super Saiyan. My assumption is that he would probably learn after Piccolo had defeated Cell. It would take him that long. 
And because of that, at that point, Goku would already have known Super Saiyan 2, and if Vegeta came to Earth, Goku would probably have to kill him, considering Vegeta would have been a major threat to society. At that point, Piccolo would have probably been able to defeat Vegeta as well. So, Vegeta wouldn't be a major threat if he came to the Earth and didn't destroy it before he fought Goku. The last major question, which includes a lot of different answers, is this. How would Goku killing Frieza with the Spirit Bomb affect all of the different types of character interactions throughout the series? Well, let's start off. The Trunks we know wouldn't be born because Vegeta never got with Bulma. Yamcha would probably still be in a relationship with Bulma and would eventually have a child whose name could be Trunks, but he would be nowhere near as strong as the Trunks that was the son of Vegeta and Bulma that was able to turn into a Super Saiyan. Krillin would never marry 18 and have Marin as a baby. Piccolo would probably be the second strongest Z fighter on Earth due to the fact that Gohan would have been slowing down his training and Goten would have taken a very 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 long time to surpass him. Goku would never learn Super Saiyan 3 because he never died and he would never learn instant transmission because he never went to planet Yardrat. He would also stay hostile with Vegeta and they would never become friends. Vegeta would stay evil and would probably terrorize the universe. He may challenge Goku when he eventually learns Super Saiyan, but may be killed by Goku or Piccolo in the process. Future Gohan would live the rest of his life in peace, but if a villain came to Earth that is stronger than him, the Earth would be screwed. Goten would be much stronger and probably the next defender on Earth if he didn't get lazy. In terms of genetic makeup, Cell would not have had Frieza's cells in him, but because of King Cole's DNA being similar to Frieza's, it wouldn't have mattered. However, if what I said before is true, where King Cole fought Goku and Piccolo from outer space, and Goku and Piccolo had to figure out a way to defeat King Cole from Earth by doing a huge blast at him, then it's still possible that King Cole's cells would not have been in Cell himself. However, this changes many things because that means that Cell himself cannot survive in outer space. As far as Hercule and Videl go, because Spopovich and Yama would have left the tournament to fight Babidi and Debora, Hercule or Videl would probably win the tournament considering Gohan and Piccolo along with Goku wouldn't have participated because Gohan and Piccolo would have left to go fight Babidi and Goku would have never fought in the first place. My bet is on Videl considering the fact that she's younger and Hercule would somehow try to find a way to make it seem as if he held back against his daughter and I think Videl would actually legitimately beat Hercule in the fight considering the fact that Gohan mentioned that she was stronger than Hercule. The Elder Kai would have never have been released because of the fact that Gohan would have never have gone to the Supreme Kai's planet to train with the Z-Sword which ultimately led to him breaking the Z-Sword which led to the Elder Kai. Because of this, that also means that the Supreme Kai and Kabito would have never fused into Kabito Shenkai. And that also means that there would be no such thing as fusion in the series, not counting the making fusion, since Goku would have never have died to learn the fusion dance, and there would have been no usage of the fusion earrings. Moving on to Kami, in the unseen and main timelines, because the Namekian race would be extinct because of King Cole with the exception of Nail, Piccolo, and Kami, Kami would probably create a new set of Dragon Balls and would wish them back to the planet Namek after King Cole's defeat. However, in the original and hot timelines, the Namekian race would cease to exist considering the fact that Piccolo would have fused with him and the Dragon Balls would turn to stone. The reason why the Z Fighters wouldn't be able to wish all of the Namex back with the Earth Dragon Balls is because of the fact that at this point that means that the Earth Dragon Balls would already have wished the, all of the Namex back once before after they were killed by Frieza and Vegeta and at this point we know the rule that says that you can't wish somebody back with the Earth Dragon Balls more than once. This relates strongly to Dende. Dende may become Guardian of the Earth in the main timeline after Cell's defeat considering the fact that the Dragon Balls would have turned to stone. However, they would have needed to have gone to New Namek with a spaceship since Goku doesn't know instant transmission. In the hot timeline and the original timelines, 
Dende wouldn't exist because of the fact that Piccolo would have fused with Kami early which would have made the Dragon Balls turn to stone and they would have no way of creating a new set of Dragon Balls since Piccolo would have been fused with Kami and that basically means that all of the Namekian race would be extinct once Piccolo had died years later. However, he may have been Guardian in the Unseen Timeline, but nobody cares about the Unseen Timeline. So guys, that has been my video for today. This is by far the most complex what-if scenario that I have ever done. I would like to thank James Krasnerik and Black and Fist for helping me plan this video out as it took quite a while to coordinate everything in this video in addition to some subscribers who gave me some suggestions on Facebook. Either way, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Please check out my video partner Thundershot's channel in addition to Black and Fist and James Krasnerik's channel in the description. But most importantly, over everything else, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And remember, as I always say, to have a great day, guys.